Hello, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Automating ENB, How to Reduce Staff Burden and Get Ahead of Denials. I'm Adam Rubenfire, Content Manager at Freesia, and I'll be moderating today's presentation. Today, we'll discuss the benefits of automating ENB verification and share how improvements to the intake process can also help prevent claims denials. Attendees can submit questions at any time using the Q&A widget, and I'll ask as many questions as time allows. In the resource widget, uh, on the on your screen, you'll find a one-page overview of Freesia, another one-pager about our automated ENB verification solution, a blog post about how digital intake improves staff efficiency, and another blog post about how automating ENB checks can reduce claims denials and labor costs. If you have any technical difficulties, please don't hesitate to reach out. We'll try our best to help you. And since it's always one of the most frequently asked questions, this session's being recorded, and you'll receive a link by the end of the week. Our session today is going to start with a quick introduction of our guests and Freesia, um, and then we'll share some insights into the importance of ENB verification and intake for reimbursement potential and profitability. Next, we'll discuss what to look for in an ENB verification tool. We'll share how self service intake can help you prevent denials and save your staff time. And finally, we'll conclude with QA with our panelists. We encourage you to send in any questions you might have throughout the webinar, and we'll get to as many as we have time for. All right, my favorite part of the presentation is getting to introduce our lovely guests for today. Angela McLeod is Practice Administrator at Genesis Spine, Joint, and Regenerative Medicine in Federal Way, Washington. Angela has been in the medical industry for over 20 years, starting as a payment poster and the claims adjuster, later moving into higher level account management as a certified professional coder, and she's a practice administrator today. Michelle Russell is administrator at Midwest ENT Center in St. Peter's, Missouri, a role she has held for 13 years. She's worked in the medical field for over 22 years with the roles from office manager and operations to now practice administrator. Thank you so much for joining us today, Michelle and Angela. Thank you. Thanks. Of course. Let's get right into it. So just a few brief words about Freesia. Freesia is guided by our mission of creating a better, more engaging healthcare experience for patients, providers, and staff. At over 120 million patient visits annually, that's over one in 10 visits across the US. Our digital platform helps healthcare organizations enhance the patient experience, drive efficiency, and improve healthcare outcomes. We've got real-time integrations with all the leading EHRs and registration scheduling and billing systems. We're a publicly traded company on the New York Stock Exchange, and we've been rated number one in patient intake management by the research and insights firm class four years in a row. Our security and privacy efforts are recognized with the industry's top certifications. If at any point during this webinar, you're curious about how Freesia can help you automate ENB checks, intake, and other administrative processes, please fill out the request of consultation form within your console. Now, let's launch right into our presentation, starting with some data. You know, I'm sure nobody here likes getting their claims denied, but have you thought about the real impact of denials on your organization? Have you thought about why claims are denied? I've got some statistics to share that offer a glimpse into what many organizations face, and it starts with the fact that over 50% of claims denials are the results are the result of mistakes on the front end of the patient journey. So that includes registration and eligibility, missing or invalid claim data, um, and issues with authorization and pre-certification. So these are problems that stem from problematic pre-visit procedures and intake processes. Healthcare organizations spend an average of $118 for every denied claim they appeal, according to MGMA, and that can add up. One way to avoid claims denials is to thoroughly check a patient's eligibility and benefits but unfortunately, some organizations do this manually, and that requires time and money. It costs healthcare organizations over $5 every time staff manually check ENB, according to CAQH. That can really add up across appointments that you have each day. Um, but electronic ENB checks can help. CAQH estimates that the industry could save a whopping $9.8 billion if every healthcare organization in the US switched to electronic ENB checks and 21 minutes could be saved per transaction as electronic verification is easier and quicker for staff. You know, when these processes are automated, because electronic doesn't always mean automated, and we're gonna talk about that in a sec, but when these processes are automated, staff can focus on interacting with patients and completing more important tasks. 
So we've made it clear that an electronic E&B solution can streamline your reimbursement process, ease the burden on staff, but what should you look for in a tool? Well, first and foremost, your E&B tool should run automatically. Uh, so many payers and clearinghouses, they offer portals to verify E&B instead of calling, but that's still a time consuming process. And we're gonna talk with Michelle and Angela about that. You know, even when it's online, staff have to use multiple portals for various pairs and manually enter patients' details. Um, and when you use a tool that automates this process and runs checks in the background, staff can simply check a patient status on their dashboard to make sure that their insurance is verified and resolve any conflicts that may have been identified. They're only working with the problems, not with every single account. Your e &B tool should automatically check a patient's eligibility and benefits multiple times before their visit without a limit on how many checks you can run. It, it's important for us to note here that some services uh, have a limit or charge per check. Shameless plug, Freesia does not. Uh, your tool should sync with an extensive list of payers so that you don't have to go outside of the process and check other sites manually. If you're looking for a benchmark, our tool syncs with more than 900 payers and is connected to every state's Medicaid and Medicare programs. That Medicaid and Medicare point is really important. Again, something we may talk about later and um, it's just, it's, it's critical because commercial insurance isn't your entire mix. Um, one of the benefits of checking ENB before the visit is getting ahead of patient balances. Uh, your ENB tool should be able to offer information about a patient's remaining deductible and copay so that you can plan for collections. And finally, you should have the ability to check multiple insurance types uh, as some patients have primary and secondary insurance and you may need to check dental, vision, or other specialty benefits too. One more slide till, before we get to our discussion here. I would just wanna spend a minute talking about the significance of intake in all of this. Uh, as we mentioned, over half of all denied claims are due to errors on that front end. So many of those errors come from inaccurate patient data. When intake is completed over the phone, it's easy to make errors. Your staff are busy, and sometimes it's hard to hear the patient. When patients complete their own registration, they can verify personal information themselves and input their own data, ensuring that it's right from the start. That not only improves claims data accuracy, but it also frees up staff. And because patients can complete intake um, before the visit when it's convenient for them, they spend less time in the waiting room. Uh, a sophisticated digital intake solution, really what it does is it makes it easy for patients to do what you need them to do well before they arrive. That can include providing important information for their record, capturing their photo ID and insurance cards, electronically signing consents, paying copays and balances, and a lot more. All right, with that, we're gonna get right into our panel discussion. I'm gonna take down our slide deck here so that we can just focus on the webcams. Um, and if you have questions for our panelists, audience, we encourage you to send them in via the Q&A widget on your console. Mm -hmm. If we don't get to your question today, we'll be sure to follow up after. Um, I would love to start just by asking our panelists to share a little bit about your organizations, your facilities, the patients you serve. Michelle, you're first on my screen. Can you start by just introducing yourself and your organization? Sure. Um, I'm Michelle Russell. I've been here for 13 years, as, as Adam had said. We see about 300 patients a day on average through here. We have five physicians, uh, three nurse practitioners that are new to our practice in the last year, four doctors of audiology, CT, and allergy. Um, we're in outside of St. Louis, Missouri, and so we have about a 15,000 square foot building that we encompass the entire thing um, with one location. That's great. Excellent. Angela, how about you? Um, we're a small interventional pain management practice. We're 100% uh, procedure-based. Um, we have a really high population of Medicare patients. Um, we have two MDs on staff and then two PAs as well. Um, and they have a full schedule of patients every day. Excellent. Awesome. Well, let's get right into our questions. You know, we've discussed some data around the E&B verification process. And I'd love to hear your perspective. Uh, what has historically been challenging about your pre-visit workflows and the processes for keeping track of all your patients' eligibility and benefits for their upcoming appointments? What, what are those pain points with the traditional process? And I want to start with Angela because, Angela, you know a lot about the traditional process, phone calling, because you used to work at an ENB call center. Tell us yes. a little bit about what that was like, um, what it would be like, you know, what it's like to call 
in for these types of things um, mm -hmm. and just kind of kind of how how you how we can improve on the process. Well, when I was doing that, um, the calls that we would get, we had a script, we had a basic benefit information that we would get and phones would ring all day with front desk people calling us for eligibility and benefits. This was long before a lot of the things became more um, web-based. So yeah. we were doing a lot of a lot of the eligibility just by phone calls. Nowadays, you call in and you can sit on the phone for quite some time if you're trying to get eligibility and benefits. And there's times where they will tell you, no, you need to go to the portal um, and get that information. And they won't even answer your questions. So um, then you have the issue of getting to their portal, <laughs> which has limited information as well. And you don't have the specifics of, um, of what you need or if you even have a login access to the, to the portal. So um I know that's one of the biggest challenges is even though they have gone more web-based, you still run into issues. Every payer has a different website. So you have to figure out how do I interpret this? What does that mean? Um, and then you have to have logins for all of them. Very few are combined into one. So having keeping track of all those logins can be a pain, especially if you have multiple front office staff. Sure. Uh, Michelle, anything to add to that? Well, I was going to say, we used to always believe the patient. They'd come in and show us their insurance card. We believed what they told us. And yeah. many times people don't even realize their spouse has new insurance at the beginning of a quarter. Um, and so we found that that is really not the best way to check their benefits. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, people were not even bringing their cards in and having this ahead of time has definitely been helpful to be able to figure things out. Well, and let's just talk about how insurance is not near as, I, I don't know if it's ever been simple, but mm -hmm. I mean, it is complicated now, high deductible plans, all kinds of different plans with different deductibles, different coverage. You've got ca uh, catastrophic plans, you know, like, I mean, and I just, I mean, the average consumer does not n understand no, their no. insurance very well. So um, it's not that we don't trust patients, but it's that we, you know, we need to, we need to verify and, and we're doing them a, uh, you know, we're, we're supporting them by verifying and making sure that they don't have surprise bills either. So Correct. that's really great. We want to, it's all about a good patient experience um, and helping ourselves and our revenue. So let's talk about automation. Um, let's talk about how automating the process has helped, um, you know, we, your staff works smarter and how it works. I, Michelle, let's stick with you for a moment. Tell me a little bit about um, kind of what the experience is like for your staff and and how you use automated verification. So we, for years, had done where we weren't automating it. And then once we kind of went to the ability to be able to do it, you know, as Angela said, we were calling insurance companies. We don't have time for that. So the fact that when we pull up a dashboard and it tells us right then and there if they have it, that's one step that we have saved. Um, we do ask the patient for insurance on the phone when they're scheduling the initial appointment. Mm -hmm but not everybody has it available. Nobody has their card with them. Mm -hmm. So being able to double check that when they come in live um, without having someone call and sit on the phone trying to find somebody or look up on 10 different portals, it's been super helpful. Sure. Angela, what about you? How how has it helped you better deploy your staff? Um, is It's definitely made it easier to create a, a streamlined intake process. So part of, you know, the... Part of the whole job um, duties is doing that pre-check of everybody's benefits. And it's easier to train staff because having one portal that looks the same, you know exactly where to find all the information that you need. Um, so having new staff come on board and being able to train them in those um, in those automated tasks is a lot easier. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, I think you actually told me, Angela, that you uh you had somebody checking in be like all day, like that was all they were doing. What what were you able to move them? Like, to, I think you, you said you were able to allocate them to a different task. Yeah, we were able to make them, we don't need two people um, at the front desk in our office anymore. We were able to move one of them into an intake specialist focusing just on new patient experience. So doing the whole, um, you know, calling new patients and, and gathering that data. So we were able to not necessarily downsize, but reallocate staff in a more appropriate way because uh, we only need one person to do that now. Yeah, this isn't a revenue. I mean, it is an important task that that makes sure that you're going to get paid eventually. But this isn't a task that's like adding value uh, when a, when somebody's doing it, when a person yeah. is doing it. Yeah, hundred um, percent. So the reason we want to do verifications, right, is claims denials. I want to understand 
how significant of an issue claims denials can be? What's the impact when claims are denied? Um, you know, and, and why do you want to get ahead of that? Michelle? Honestly, the denials are staggering. They still continue to come through no matter what we do. No automation is ever going to stop it. So getting the eligibility is one of those items that they're getting it. We're getting it from the insurance company through you. So I, there's no denial on the back end that they can come back and say, well, you didn't get that. We, we have it from them. And so to us, that's really important. Um, being able to stop all of those staggering numbers of denials before they even can start. Mm-hmm. And Michelle, you, you told me, I think you told me you've used printouts. Like you, you've said, yes. look, we got this. Yes. This is not be denied. We mm-hmm. we used your verification, right? Yeah, correct. We have. And we will go back and look at things. Even sometimes when we have patients who tell us, oh, I have insurance. I have insurance. And we're like, no, you don't. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we, we have to sometimes use it on a daily basis to verify with the current patients that we have live and then to fight claims on the back end. I mean, you want to safeguard your revenue. Like, I mean, documentation is critical. So that's... Yes. That's great. Angela, um, you know, I think you told me I, when, when, I, when I've talked to you about this previously, you said, well, we, we don't have a lot of denials, uh, you know, not, and not, not, <laughs> not, not right now. But yeah. but I mean, what I, I just what is the, the impact if you do? I mean, it, it really it, tell me about how that impact would impact your staff and finances. Like just how significant mm-hmm. are they, that yeah. you want to avoid it? Yeah, it delays money. So obviously bills come for practice and you got to pay them, you know, the first of the month, the 15th of the month, you need to have a steady stream of income to keep that practice flowing, payroll, all of that. When you have denials, you didn't delay the claim. I mean, it's 45 days minimum to get a claim paid. You have a denial, you're waiting another 45, sometimes 60, sometimes 90 days for them to put it back through their system and get it Mm -hmm. reprocessed. That delays all your money and it delays the streamline of the revenue that you need to support the practice. It makes, you know, the drops in revenue really affect. So keeping a steady flow of revenue, it's, it's the denials. You have to keep the denials low and make sure everything's being done to prevent them on the front end. I think that's a great point. This isn't like we fix the date of birth or, or whatever the issue is, and then boop, okay, we get paid. It's it's a vicious cycle, frankly, a continuing cycle of just uh, wait, you know, hurry up and wait. So that's mm-hmm. that's fascinating. I you know, I mean, the other thing, Angela, if I could stick with you on is um, we know that that EMB verification can also help staff determine patient financial responsibility. Yeah. You know, their remaining deductible and copay. Um, I, I know you collect upfront deductibles for procedures, right? Tell me a little bit about how ENB verification helps you with that process. Well, we don't have to call. That was one thing you didn't find on a lot of the portals is the deductible information. So having that readily available now has been extremely helpful and we're able to calculate that and collect the money up front. And again, it comes back to that steady stream of revenue. The more money that you collect up front, it helps continue to support that. So being able to um, collect that up front and patients love the automation of it. We don't have to really interact with them. They get you know, the, through their patient intake, they can pay on their phone or through email. Um, they don't have to come up to the front desk and we don't have to go through that process. We can let them know this is how much you owe and they can have it taken care of before they come through the front door. Yeah, great. Michelle, I, I want to talk about how intake helps with this too. Um, having patients, you know, do their own registration. I know you said you're collecting some initial information over the phone and then they verify. Mm-hmm. Tell me a little bit about how that has how, is that uh, an important tactic to uh, to avoid denials, to keep things accurate? It is, um, and, and we really strive to do that. And here in our practice, you know, we have a large volume of people coming through the practice and knowing what their copay is, knowing if they have a deductible, high deductible with their co-insurances is sometimes, you know, crucial for the patient to understand. So being able to collect all that at the front and know when they walk in that there's going to be a copay and we know and we have it correct on what they owe, because a lot of times the cards don't say on there what their copay is. Um, and so having all that information up front on that dashboard makes it much easier for our front desk people to have that conversation. Yeah, tell me a little bit. About, I, I think that the, one of the things we forget um, is, you know, you can go into a record and, and check each patient individually, um, you know, and, and make sure that they're, you know, that all of this information is here. You can go, you know, look line by line. Tell me a little bit about, 
having a dashboard, having like alerts and and kind of statuses and that kind of thing. How important is it to see things at a glance? I'm going to say super important for okay. our staff. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, it helps our staff focus on what they need to focus on. Mm -hmm. A lot of times when they were doing the pre, um, you know, doing the check on the schedule before patients come in, it was that they go line through line because nothing stood out glaring. They had to look for the errors. They had to look for the problems. Having a dashboard and having red flags and, you know, red triangles and different alerts come up has them focus on getting that stuff handled immediately and not have to spend a lot of time looking through stuff that's already correct. They didn't need to look through it. Yeah. And I'm going to add to that to Angela saying, you know, our staff loves the fact that those people that are all green or there's a checkbox yeah. right on and they can continue to move through that process much quicker with the volume that we have. It's crucial for us to get through those 200, 300 patients every day quickly and then be able to go back and see where we you know, have to leave a note because there's something going on with that patient. It's really that's important to be able to see it in one view. Yeah, and me I mean, too, because I'm not working it, but I pull it up and look at it as administrator and I can totally see what's going on. I can watch, yeah. monitor. I, I mean, the fact the, people would be surprised to know that some places are manually transferring, you know, data, transcribing paper forms that I mean, that's we're not even talking about that here. But, mm -hmm. you know, to have to line by line check things that should be pretty, you know, that that we can use automation for. Um, I mean, it's time consuming. You want to deal with just the problems because by the way, we know in insurance, the problems can take a lot of time, right? I mean, yes. especially, I mean, Angela, you know, when you're, well, you both work in procedure, procedure-based organizations. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, prior authorizations, pre-certifications, these, the, mm -hmm. for a lot of your procedures, I mean, Angela, these are not simple uh, conversations with the insurance company, yeah. right? No, they, I mean, they, they're definitely long conversations, medical records need to be attached, all those things. So having um, other parts be a lot more simple and straightforward so we can focus on to get these procedure paid is, is nice. Great. Okay. So um, we talked about self-service intake. Um, I just want to, I want to talk a little bit more about um, kind of this data accuracy point. Um Angela, is there like, are there common errors that you see more than others as far as like, um, as, as, as what goes wrong into the file as far as intake that this is helping yeah. you avoid? Um, phone numbers and emails, big, big thing. I mean, human error all the time with that. And before um, we had the automation, before Frisia, you know, having staff do that, I mean, we would have to go double check if we had a new staff member we'd have to go back through and double check their data entry and make sure that they entered everything correctly. Or we'd have to go back to the original paperwork that the patient filled out already with the correct information and re-enter that, that data. That's great. That's great. Um, you know, I, I think one of the other questions we get a lot and that we're getting um, here is around secondary insurance. Um, and if it's possible to run for multiple insurance, uh, you know, types and, you know, primary, secondary, specialty benefits. Um, I know um, we kind of talked about that as an important thing. You know, Michelle, is there anything you have to add as far as when you have a primary and secondary insurance? Is that something that's easy for staff to do? It is easy. I mean, the dashboard allows you to see a little number next to that insurance, which is a alert right away. Visually, you can see it. Um, and that's been super helpful. Again, we're only as good as the patient tells us in many cases, which yeah. get it wrong sometimes. So um, we certainly try to do our best to make sure that they're in the right order before we you know, get ready to submit a claim. But at least it gives us something to go on. And it's also, um, it helps our staff. Our billing office was always pointing fingers at our front desk, like, you got it wrong. The patient gave it to us. And so that has helped some of the morale. Um, I'm not going to lie to you because people always want to blame somebody. And so, you know, the patients give it to mm -hmm. us and we can see it super quick. We can see that they have two insurances. We can see that they are active or there's a problem with something, which is really helpful. Angela, anything to add to that? Um, in addition to the secondary, one thing that we have found extremely helpful is when patients have a Medicare replacement plan, they mm -hmm. don't understand it. They come in with their Medicare card, they hand us their Medicare card, and a lot of those replacement plans require authorization for procedures. Some even require auth for 
um, office visits. Mm -hmm. And so we were running into issues where we did not have that data and we didn't know until we build out the claim. And by the time we got the response back from the insurance, we build out a claim, we build out a procedure and we're getting denied from all of them because we did not know. So, and there's no recourse. There's no yeah, recourse. No, so. we have to write off the money. We don't get that money at all. So having that information, knowing for sure, no, you have a replacement plan. They're like, what are you talking about? I have a secondary. They they don't know. So Gosh. having that information, being able to get off and referrals and things that we need so we get paid. Um, that's been a, a really, uh, the staff love having that um, ability now. That's a great point. Medicare Advantage is a really, you know, important uh, you know, uh, part of the industry, but patients don't always understand that they have it. Um, yeah. That's really interesting. Thank you for sharing with that. I, mm-hmm. I think I just keep coming back to this point of a little investment on the front end of this, Steve. I mean, th- you just said like, you're, you're like 40 days down the line and you have nothing you can do because you already submitted the claim and you get it back. I mean, you know, it, it honestly, it is so different than any other part of the any industry where we kind of get this instant gratification. It's, it's fascinating to me. Um, But at least we can get instant gratification with E&B verification, you know, um, in this way. So maybe, maybe that's our answer here. Um, I want to go to our final uh, question here. Um, Audience, again, if if I missed your question, we'll get to and continue to send in questions um, and we can even follow up with them after. But um, just a last question to kind of sum us up here. If you could offer one piece of advice to an organization that's hoping to reduce claims denials and save their staff time in the pre-visit workflow, what would it be? Michelle, I'll start with you. I would say, why would you not move forward where you can get your insurance verification done, save your time, save your practice time and energy, save your doctor some money because the money on the back end you're spending to fight these claims, like Angela said, or write them off. It isn't worth it. I mean, it's so much better to get it in the beginning. Yeah, we we one hundred eighteen dollars sent to spent mm-hmm. to appeal each denied claim. Um, you know, that's that adds up. I mean, especially considering how much a visit, you know, how much you're billing for a uh-huh. visit. I mean, that's that's significant. Angela, what about you? Well, I would say um, you know, twofold. You need to have a really strong front end process. I mean, that's critical no matter what, but you need to use the technology that's available. It's important to move forward with the times and um, and you'd be surprised. A lot of times we had pushback, oh, our patient are older, they're not gonna wanna do this stuff. They had absolutely no problem um, adapting to using the technologies available and some enjoy it. So you need to be able to have a strong process in place to gather that data and then use the technologies that are available to make it streamlined and, and save time. Yeah, I'll just add, I think this tool, and you know, we talk about, um, we talk, we've talked about revenue, we've talked about uh, claims denials and, and patient experience. I think this is an important tool to reduce burnout. Um, staff do not want to be doing manual repetitive things. They want to be talking to patients, or if they're going to deal with uh, issues, it should be complex issues that require, you know, the, the you know, the, the fantastic skill set that your staff have, um, not, you know, basic phone calls sitting on hold, you know, um, we all want our staff to be happy and, and love what they do. So I just, I just want to add that. Mm-hmm. Um, well, Michelle, Angela, uh, that's really all the time we have for today. I'm going to go ahead and show our lovely thank you slide just to thank our audience for joining us. Um, audience, again, if we didn't get to your question in the chat, or if you have any questions about Frisia, Please don't hesitate to request a consultation using the form on your screen. We'd love to be in touch. Michelle, Angela, fantastic conversation. I really enjoyed it. Um, I really, uh, I hope you both learned something from each other and I hope our audience learned from you. I know I did. Um, So thank you so much. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.